over here, right, right over here, down here. Welcome to iOS 14. You can do this too. Shrink down a video or a FaceTime call in the new iPhone operating system. You just need to know where to find the hidden setting. And that's really the story of this year's iOS release. It's packed with fairly obscure features that are very useful and that fix problems you probably didn't even realize were problems. I've uncovered 14 of the best features. 14 because, you know, iOS 14. Number one, widgets. You can now add these little widgets with glanceable live info about the weather, news, you name it, right to your home screen. Sure, this is pretty much a direct Android ripoff, but Apple did a nicer job. Only took 12 years. There are two ways to add them. Hold down on the home screen. When everything starts to jiggle, tap the plus button in the upper left and pick your favorite widget. I'm super into the battery percentage one. And if you want to be depressed at a glance, try adding the new dynamic screen time widget, which shows you how long you've been on your device. Another way to add, swipe left to right on the home screen to the widget screen. Hold down on the one you want and drag away. Number two, smart stacks, or what I call mega widgets. You can combine a few widgets into one and scroll through them or have them auto rotate. Go back to the widget page, scroll down and tap Smart Stack. After you add one, hold down on the widget and customize. Swipe to delete certain widgets and hold down to reorder. Another way to make stacks, just drag widgets on top of each other. Number three, App Library. You know what's annoying? This. Oculus should, no, I want to move it. No, I want to go to this page. Organizing apps into folders. Now Apple does that for you. Swipe to your last page of apps, then swipe one more time, and you'll see the new app library. This places all your apps into automatically generated categories. Search for your apps up here, or pull down to get a long list of your apps. Number four, hide app pages. Hold down on the home screen, then tap these little dots and you can select which app pages you'd like to hide. In case you're wondering how I've set up my home screen, I've got my most used apps on the main home screen and then this stacked widget up here. And that's it. I just swipe to the app library when I need apps. No more pages. You still with me? We're moving on now to messages. Number five, pinned conversations. Can't find your family group chat or another super important messaging chain? Tap edit in the upper left, then edit pins, hit the little pin next to the messages to pin it. Number six, threaded replies. In a long messaging chain, reply to a specific message. Long press on the message and select reply. To be honest, this isn't all that well implemented. It's hard to see where the replies actually are. Number seven, emoji search. Yep, don't really need to explain this one. Halfway mark, grab a snack, Gatorade. We're gonna get through this. Number eight, picture in picture. You know how when you're on a FaceTime call and you swipe up and the video just pauses and goes away? Well, no more. Here I am, always with you while you're distracted and doing something else iOS has a picture-in-picture -picture mode, so you can just keep the video and conversation going. Just swipe up on the FaceTime app during a call. And now, just like iPads, picture-in-picture -picture also works with other videos. Other apps will need to add support, but in Safari, here's how it works. Go into full screen mode when viewing a video, then tap the picture-in-picture -picture button. You can move the box around and also hide it. Number nine, FaceTime eye contact. You know how when you're video calling, you look at the screen and not the camera because it's more natural? Well, Apple's using machine learning to make it look to the other caller like you're looking at the camera. Go to settings, FaceTime, scroll down and switch on eye contact. It sort of works. Number 10, Safari privacy report. There are lots of obvious privacy features, like this new little green dot that appears whenever your camera's being used. But one feature that you'll have to seek out is in Safari. Tap the small A's up here, then Privacy Report. Here you'll see all the trackers that are following you across the web. Number 11, Approximate Location. 
This is one of the best new privacy features. Instead of giving an app your exact location, which can often reveal your home address, you can now share your approximate location with any app that requests your location data. Go to Settings, Privacy, then Location, and switch off Precise Location on the apps where you'd like to limit this. Number 12, Sleep Mode. In the Health app, set up sleep mode so your device sleeps when you do. And you can set up sleep. First, set your sleep hours. Then you can enable sleep mode, which will turn on Do Not Disturb and disable notifications from lighting up your home screen. The entire screen just goes to sleep till you tell it to wake up. Number 13, Back Tap. This is a bit of a crazy one. When I tap the back of my iPhone two times now, it takes a screenshot. You can customize two or three tap actions to do what you'd like, including screenshots or launching Control Center. Go to Settings, Accessibility, Touch, Back Tap, and then Double Tap. From there, you can pick from a list of shortcuts. This only works with the iPhone 8 and later, though. Number 13, Different Defaults. Finally, you can change your default mail or email app. In settings, scroll down to a browser app, like Chrome or Microsoft Edge. Select it, and then select Default Browser App. Now when you tap a link anywhere in the operating system, it should launch in that browser. Woo! We did it! We made it through all the tips. What are you still doing here? Go make a mega widget, or put a mask on your Memoji. Oh yeah, that's another thing you can do in iOS 14. Oh crap, now I've given you 15 tips. Come on, get out of here. Let's go!